Let's walk through setting up Cypress for end-to-end -end testing in an Ionic and Angular application. So I just have a freshly generated Ionic application on screen now. And you'll see we have this E2E folder at the top here. At the moment, by default in new Angular applications, we have Protractor as the end-to-end -end testing framework. So just recently, the Angular team put out a request for comments, and it sounds like they will soon be removing Protractor as the default from Angular applications, and Protractor itself will also become deprecated. So although perhaps you already have some end-to-end -end tests uh, running in Protractor, or you might want to use Protractor because it's currently the default, uh, now is sort of a good time to start looking at alternative options and Cypress is a really great option for end-to-end -end testing. In my opinion, I do find it just a lot simpler to use. It's a much nicer experience. Uh, I haven't used it for as long as I've been using Protractor, but I've had nothing but a great experience so far. So you don't need to pull out Protractor in order to use Cypress. You could leave uh, your Protractor tests running in your application and also just have Cypress as well if you wanna sort of just try it out. But we're going to use the Brybug schematic for automatically getting rid of Protractor and installing Cypress into the application. So you can set up Cypress manually, but by using this schematic, we can do everything we need in just about one command. So all we need to do is just run ng add and then supply the Brybug schematic. So you can see I've pasted the command down here and all we need to do is hit enter and that's going to start doing everything we need to get Cypress set up in our application and to remove Protractor as well. So as this command is running, you will be given the option to choose whether or not you want to remove Protractor. Obviously, if you have some Protractor tests in an existing application, you probably don't want to get rid of those, but uh, this is a fresh new application. I don't want Protractor, I'm gonna be using Cypress. So I'm just going to say uh, yes to that. And you can see in these commands that have run here, uh, if I just scroll back up, you can see it's deleted the E2E folder. We've created a bunch of Cypress files. It's updated the package.json and the angular.json file. Now you might get this error when you run this command. I think there's currently some incompatibility with uh, the current version of Webpack that is being used. Uh, but we can just get around that by using the uh, legacy peer dependencies uh, flag when we, when we run the npm install command. So basically everything succeeded in running this schematic. It's just this last step where we're trying to npm install all the packages that is failing. So everything is already done. You can see we have a Cypress folder here now. The existing E2E folder is gone. We just need to get our uh, packages installed. So what we can do is just run npm install and then supply that legacy peer depths uh, flag. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you are using Cypress is that the test runner comes with its own uh, independent application. So when you run your end-to-end -end tests, there is going to be a Cypress app that will launch on your computer. And then from there, you launch your actual uh, E2E tests. So I already have that app installed on my computer, but just keep in mind that the first time you do this, you, know, you might need to wait a while for it to download or uh, you might have uh, permission errors uh, if uh, your computer you know, doesn't trust this app. I think on the Mac OS, it will verify the package before running it, which can take a little while, which might cause some errors. So just make sure you don't run into anything like that. If you do run into troubles opening up the Cypress app for the first time, just check uh, if there's any permission errors going on, or otherwise just try to run it again and it will probably work. Okay, so that npm install command has finished running successfully now. So let's just take a look at what's happened to our application. And we're going to just set up a couple of config values uh, as well. So the main thing is that we have this Cypress folder now, and we have a few folders here. We have integration, plugins, support, and you might also uh, sometimes see a fixtures uh, folder as well. And so basically integration is our tests. Uh, plugins are any plugins that uh, Cypress is using. You can use, uh, you can add plugins to Cypress to do things. We have a support folder, which is for things like custom Cypress commands we want to create or perhaps some helper functions. And the fixtures folder I mentioned would be for doing things like creating fake data uh, for HTTP responses, for example, if you wanna hit a server 
you could set up some dummy data in your fixtures folder that Cypress will return for you. So you get your dummy data instead of uh, getting the real data from the server. So what we're going to do is go into the cypress.json uh, file here. And you can see this is just the basic Cypress configuration, just saying where specific things are. So the integration folder, which is our tests, points to the Cypress forward slash integration folder. Uh, if you wanted to, you could say rename this to tests if you wanted to have it in a folder called tests instead. Uh, but the main thing we're going to do here is change this base URL. Uh, to point to the same port that our Ionic application is going to be running on when we serve it. And I actually already have the Ionic application being served over on the right now. And you can see Ionic apps run uh, usually on port 8100. So we're just gonna change that to 8100 so that Cypress will go there when it's trying to load up the app. And we will run the tests in just a moment, but let's first take a look at the test it's going to try to run. So this is the default uh, test that comes with the, uh, after you run the schematic. And I'm not going to get too much into the syntax in this video. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you are already familiar with things like um, Jasmine or Jest or Protractor, it should look pretty similar. The general format will have things like it and before each uh, that we can run in our tests. And then a lot of the tests will be run through this global psi command which is short for Cypress. And from there we can call the various methods that Cypress makes available. So in this default test, it's using sci.visit, which is going to trigger the test to visit whatever URL you supply here. So this is just going to go to the base uh, root URL. And then it's running what is basically the equivalent of an expect statement. We have a call to sci.contains so it just wants to know whether this page contains this following text, replace me with something relevant. So this is going to fail for us because our app doesn't have that text on the page, but we're gonna run it anyway. Uh, but this is the basic way you do expect statements in, uh, in Cypress. We might also do something like uh, sci.get. Uh, it's a very common uh, method to use. And we can basically just supply a selector to get, uh, just a standard CSS selector. So I might do something like sci.get my content area. So we're looking for that class. And then we can call the, the should method. And now we can say what we're expecting from that element. So we might say should, and then we can see a bunch of uh, different, I guess, matches, uh, if you want to call them that, pop up here. And generally we might use something like a, a have text or contains text, which I think is actually the same thing, just worded differently. Maybe there's some small difference I'm not aware of. And then you just supply the value that you want it to have. So that might be something like, uh, hello. And now it's going to check that. So let's just stick with the default test for now. We'll run it, see what happens. So to run the test, we're going to do npm run e2e, just the, the default um, e2e command that we have set up in our package.json. You can see this is just going to run ng e2e. So we'll run that. And what this is going to do is eventually it's going to load up that Cypress app and then we'll pick up from there and I'll show you how that works. An important thing to mention here is that since we pointed Cypress to port 8100, we do need to make sure that we have the Ionic application being served already. Uh, so if you don't, make sure you just open up a separate terminal window and just run the Ionic serve command on your application. So this is the Cypress app that you can see on screen right now. And we just have the one test right now, so there's not a whole lot going on. But basically all of our tests are going to be listed down here under integration tests. So what we can do is we can click on a specific spec file to run just that uh, one spec file. Or we can click here where it says run one integration spec. Uh, if there's more specs, that's going to run all of them. And so typically you might have a separate spec file for each page in your application, or you can set it up however you want. So what I'm gonna do is just click on this run button and the tests are going to start loading. And in a moment, we'll see the test actually running. Okay, so you can see that it's currently running the test now. It first uh, tried to visit that uh, default URL, just the, the root URL. And then it tried to check for some text that says replace me with something relevant. And then the test fails because it can't find that. And so what Cypress will do which is one of the great features of Cypress is it doesn't just auto fail a test. So when it can't find that text, it doesn't just try once and be like, well, can't find it. 
uh, test fails, uh, it actually will retry uh, again after up to four, uh, four seconds. And I assume that can be configured as well, but four seconds should be enough. And so this is great for sort of asynchronous scenarios or even just the kind of uh, scenarios where the element isn't immediately available. Cypress will just wait for that like a normal user would and check it then, as opposed to something like Protractor where it'll try to instantly run the next command. And unless you specifically tell it to wait by using something like say expected conditions to be uh, like, I'll wait for this to happen and then check if it's there or just wait a few seconds or something like that. Uh, Cypress just basically works the way you would want it to. But anyway, it can't find that text. So the test fails. So let's just make this test pass. So what we're going to do is just go to the tab one page here and just replace that with what it's expecting to see. Or we could do it the other way around. We'll just say uh, we expect it con to contain tab one page. So if I save that and maybe I'll change the name of this too uh, for the test to has uh, tab one page. Obviously this isn't a particularly useful test, but we just want to see how this works in general. So I can open up that same test window again, and it's already rerun my tests. Now, if you want to rerun them manually, you can just click this little refresh button at the top and you can see that now the test passes. Now I do want to run one more, slightly more advanced example, just to highlight one of the really cool features of Cypress, which is its so-called time traveling uh, debugging abilities. Uh, I think they refer to it as something like that, but it's really, it really is quite good. What Cypress will do basically is take a snapshot of the DOM at every step along the test. And so if something fails, we can go back step by step and actually see and inspect what happened in the test, which makes it super easy to debug. So this example is a bit basic, so there's not really a whole bunch going on that we can look at. So what I thought we'll do is just go through an example of setting up a slightly more complex test. So we're just going to add it to this page. So what I've done basically is on the third tab, let me just open up that file. Uh, I have set it up so that I just have a button here. And if I click that button, it is going to change the text to hello. So we're going to write a test to actually do that. We're going to have the user go to first to the default URL. Then we're going to click on tab three, click on the button and then check that that text is now hello. So let's go back to our spec file. We'll get a little bit fancy now and add a before each at the top. And we should probably also, I'll turn this into like a full proper spec here by adding a, creating a test suite. And I think the uh, before each needs to be in a test suite anyway to run. I'm not actually sure of that, but generally we'll have a describe at the top and we can name this test suite. Um, I'm just going to call it default or something. Uh, for now, but I would typically name them after whatever page this spec file is actually for. So we will pop all of this inside of our test suite and inside of our before each, we're going to call sci.visit. So now it's just going to take us to that default URL uh, automatically in each one of our tests. So every time a specific test run, it's going to do this first. So we don't have to worry about navigating to the default URL every single time. And now we can add a new test and we will add a test for uh, clicking refresh button. I just call clicking button on tab three changes title. Obviously this is a super weird and contrived test, but uh, this is the basic idea. So to do that, let's just uh, imagine what would actually happen. So the user first needs to go to the default uh, URL, which we're already doing in our before each, which is going to take us to tab one. And so from tab one, we want to click on the tab three button. So to do that, we can use sci.get, and then we just need to get the selector for tab three. So I'm just going to bring that up in the dev tools here. So let me just bring this over so you can see as well. So we have an eye on tab button that we want to click and we could use, you know, we could use a whole range of different selectors here, but it has an ID of tab button tab three. So that seems like a perfectly good selector to use. So we'll say sci.get and we need to put in the hash there because it's an ID. This works the same as a CSS selector. So we're gonna call sci.get, get that button and click it. And then once we click it, we are then going to grab this uh, refresh button. So again, we'll do the same thing that we just did. We'll inspect that and just figure out how we want to grab that. 
So since it's the only uh, button in our header, we could just say sci.get so ion toolbar, ion buttons, and then this will be the only ion button in there. This isn't a ultra specific selector because if we did add additional buttons up there, then our test uh, will break. But again, let's keep it simple. Go with that for now. We can always fix these things up later. So we want to click that. And then once we've clicked that, we want to check that this uh, page now contains or this specific element contains um, the hello text. So we could either use the same sci.contains or we could grab this specific element and check the text on that. Uh, let's do that. So we should be able to just grab a reference to the app explore container, which is here, uh, which is what all of this is inside. So we should be able to just grab a reference to that. We'll say sci.get, uh, what was it? App explore container, I think it was. And then we can call our should method I will say contain text, hello. Let me just double check what that was exactly. Hello with an exclamation mark. Okay, so now we have a sort of more advanced uh, test suite going on here. So we'll open up Cypress again. We can actually just open up the, uh, the browser window directly where the tests are running. And we can see both the tests here. Uh, we should probably break it first. Um, that's always a good thing to do when you have a test, make sure it actually fails at some point. So let's change that to instead of hello, we will say bye. We will run our tests again. And so you can see it was trying to run that, uh, but it has failed. Obviously we've made it fail on purpose, but now let's take a look at that time travel debugging feature that I was just talking about. So you can see we have every step that it tried. We have our before each block, which runs before each of our tests. So that's just going to visit the default route, load that up, that's fine. Then we say get, tab button, tab three, and click. And you can see it actually says this element is not uh, uh, visible yet, but it's still able to get that reference and click it. And you can see at this point, our page is visible now. And we're at the step where we are getting, we're on that tab three page already. And now we're getting that uh, refresh button. So you can see over on the right here, we can see that that refresh button is highlighted. We can then click it. And with click events like this, it is especially cool because we can also see a snapshot of before and after. So you can see uh, before we have tab three page. If I click on after, we can see it has changed to buy. And then if we look at the next uh, statement here, it says uh, it's getting app explore container. It's expecting that uh, app explore container contains the text hello, but the text was uh, tab one, page explorer, UI components, buy. Uh, so it has uh, it's found all of the text that is in there, but uh, this is sort of the important bit. The fact that we have buy in there, we want that to say hello, uh, not buy. So if we just uh, fix that up, we'll change that back from buy to hello, and then we'll see that the test uh, passes again. So we just hit that refresh button again to run the test. And you can see now that it's passed, if we expand it, um, yeah, we can see the same thing as we can before that's step by step, but obviously it is able to pass now because the correct text is contained uh, inside of that app explore container somewhere. And I have one more quick example to show you. And that is uh, how this also behaves really well with asynchronous behavior. So uh, if we were to say be waiting for a response from something that you know, might be a promise or an observable or something that's just going to take some amount of time, uh, Cypress, as I mentioned, will wait for that to happen before failing the test. So I've set up this change name async method, which is, does exactly the same thing, just changes the name property to hello, which is going to change that text on the page. So let's just call that instead, save that, and we will rerun our tests again. So I'll refresh that. And just to show you in the actual app over here, what's happening, if I were to click on this, I'll, I'll click it in a moment, but you'll notice there's a slight delay from when I click to when it changes. So I'm going to click now, and then there's the one second delay before it actually changes. So let's just watch our test run again. And you can see if you paid attention, you would have been able to see that click on the refresh button here, you see a highlight, uh, but Cypress doesn't care that it's not instantly available. It will retry for up to that four seconds. And if it happens at some point, it's fine. The test will pass. So again, that's a lot easier than something like Protractor where you have to be very specific with what happens and when you want to test what and when.
Okay, so I hope this helps you get up and running with Cypress in your Ionic and Angular applications. This is obviously a very basic introduction and we just have a single spec file here doing some pretty contrived tests. But Cypress has a lot of features that can help you write tests at a more advanced level, especially the custom commands that you're able to create with Cypress are extremely helpful. If you do want more Cypress content from me specifically, I am, well, I've currently finished actually a new module for Elite Ionic on using Cypress and Jest in Ionic and Angular applications. At the time of filming this video, it's not currently available yet, but uh, keep an eye out for that over at EliteIonic.com. And otherwise I'll probably have some more videos and blog posts and things like that on Cypress soon enough because I think it's really awesome and I love using it. Okay, so I hope you liked that video. If you did, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.